In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a pie chart. The data is on visitors to a given website from different sources. A pie chart is ideal to visualize this type of data. It shows how each source has contributed to the number of visitors. You should consider the pie chart whenever you're dealing with parts with reference to the total. Now, let me move on to create a pie chart for this data. I'm going to select the cell range A3 to B8. First, you should go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and then click on Pie Chart icon. Pie Chart icon can easily be identified by its circle-like shape. If you click on the Pie Chart icon, you can see several variants. One is 2D Pi and the others are 3D and Donut Charts. Within 2D, there are Pi of Pi and Bar of Pi, which we will cover in subsequent chapters. For now, I'm going to click and select the 2D Pi, which is the first one in the 2D section. You can see that the pie chart is created. The chart title is at the top and the legends are displayed at the bottom. You can see that the data is visualized as slices inside the circle. In pie chart, each slice is a data point. Notice the three icons on the right hand side of the pie chart. The plus icon is for editing the chart elements, the brush icon is for changing chart style, and the filter icon is the chart filter. You can filter data points in the chart data. First, let me try to change the chart style. Click on the brush icon and you can see several styles. I'm going to scroll down and select the style which has the labels. Here in my Excel it is style 3. In your Excel it can be some other style. You can see the chart appears in new style. We can customize the graph for better display. First, let us decide what the label should contain. It will take three steps to customize the label. Step 1, double click on one of the labels. You will see Format Data Labels pane on the right hand side of the screen. Step 2, in the pane, select the label options and you can see another label option. Step 3, go to the label option and select category name checkbox. You can view the category name added to the labels. If you select value, then the data value gets added to the labels. Let me uncheck value. Now, let me change the position of label display. For this, I'm going to scroll down. You can position the labels either at the center of the circle or at its periphery or you can position it outside the circle. I'm going to select the best fit option and let Excel decide what is best for this chart. You can edit the chart title. For this, you double click and edit the title. I'm going to change the title as direct traffic is the number one traffic source. You can apply the pie explosion and make one or more slices stand out. Let me make the slice direct traffic stand out. This will take two steps. Step one, double click on any of the slices. Let me double click on the direct traffic slice. You can see that all the slices get selected and you can see the format data series pane. You should work on the format data series pane when you want changes in all the slices. When you want to change only one of the slices, then we need format data point pane. Step two, click again on direct traffic slice. You can observe that direct traffic slice gets selected and you can see format data point pane. You can see a scale under point explosion. Either drag the marker on the scale or set the value to 20%. You can see the direct traffic slice is exploded and it stands out. You can delete any chart element by selecting it and pressing the delete key. As an example, you can select legend and press delete. The legend gets removed. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a column chart. For this, let me consider the data on store-wise soda soft drink sales. Here you have sales data on five products in two stores. In charting vocabulary, products or categories and stores are series. You should consider cluster column chart whenever you want to visualize a group of categories across one or more series. Let me select the input data cell range A3 to C8. First, you should go to the insert tab on the ribbon and then select column chart icon. There are both 2D and 3D variants under both column and bar charts. I'm going to select the first icon under the 2D option. This is a cluster column chart. You can see that a cluster column chart is created with the chart title, X and Y axis labels, and legend. I'm going to click on the chart title text box and change the title to store wise soda soft drink sales. You can change the legend position. Double click on one of the legends and go to the right hand side pane. The right hand side pane works as a context menu. If the legend is selected, then legend menu appears in the pane. If chart title is selected, then chart title menu appears on the pane. Let me go back to change the legend. In the legend menu, click the third icon which is legend options. Among the various options, let me select the top option. You can see that the legend is moved to the top. You can remove grid lines. As you may be aware, chart is divided to chart areas and plot area. The areas bounded by the axis is called plot area 
whereas the area outside the axis is called chart area. Let me go back to removing grid lines. This will take four steps. Double click on plot area and you will find format plot area menu on the pane. Step two, click on the down arrow next to the plot area options. Step three, select major grid line option. Step four, select no line radio button. You can see that there are no grid lines on the plot area. This video shows you how to create a bar chart. Bar charts are very similar to the column chart. Bars are horizontal to x-axis, whereas columns are vertical to the x-axis. Let me consider the data in cell range A3 to C8. This is the sales data for five products across two stores. Products are categories and the stores are series. In the bar chart, categories are represented in the y-axis. The values, which is the category level, is represented on the x-axis. Notice that the product names are longer. One should prefer bar chart over column chart whenever the category names are long or there are too many categories. Also, one should consider bar chart when category levels are measured in time. For instance, bar charts are ideal if the transaction time is to be compared across two stores. Here we have a chart comparing waiting time across two restaurants. You can see that the bar chart represents time comparison better. Now, let me begin to create a bar chart. The first step is to select the range A3 to C8. Now, let me go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and click on the column chart icon. I'm going to 2D bar charts and select the first icon, which is clustered bar chart. You will observe that a clustered bar chart is created with axis labels, legends, and chart title. I'm going to edit the title as store-wise soda soft drink sales. Let me change the chart background color. Chart background is also called chart area. Double click on chart area and go to the bucket icon in the pane. Select white background 1, darker 5%. You can change the plot area color. Plot area is the area covered by the graph. You can click anywhere on the plot area and then go to the bucket icon in the pane. Select white background 1, darker 25%. You can see that the plot area and chart area are now looking distinct. In this video, I'm going to create a line chart. For this, let me consider the data in cell range A3 to B9. The data gives the yearly sales data for a given firm from 2013 to 2018. We call the data as time series data whenever values represent levels of a given variable over time. Line chart is ideal chart type to visualize time series data. Now, let me create a line chart for the yearly sales data. For this, I'm going to select the range B3 to B9. This means I will have to add the x-axis labels later. Now, let me go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and then click on the line chart icon. You can see many 2D and 3D variants of both line and area charts. Let me select the first icon among the 2D options. You can see a line chart is created with the chart title as sales, but there are no axis titles. Here, the x-axis labels are displayed as 1, 2, 3. You can change that to display the actual years 2013, 2014, etc. Click on x-axis labels and select filter icon which is just below the plus icon. Go towards the bottom and click on select data icon. You can see a dialog box with two sections. The left section is to edit y-axis series, whereas the right section is to edit x-axis labels. Go to the right section and click on edit button and add x-axis range. I'm going to select the cell range as A4 to A9 and select OK. You can observe that the years are updated in the horizontal axis. Click OK. You can also add axis titles. For this, you have to click on the chart and click the plus icon and then click on the right arrow and select either or both axis. You can see a text box in the chart area. One can click and edit to add a title in the text box. Let's enter years as the x-axis title and sales as the y-axis title. Sometimes, default values of minimum value and maximum values of y-axis does not make sense. You can change the maximum and minimum values. Double click on the vertical axis and go to the axis option in the pane. Fix the minimum bound to 900 and maximum bound to 1300. Now you can clearly see the fluctuation in sales over the years. In this video, I'm going to cover scatter plots. For this, let me consider the data in cell range A1 to C5. The data has the sales data for two companies for the period 2010 to 2013. We are going to explore if there is any relationship between the sales of these two companies. I'm going to select the range B2 to C5. Go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and select Scatter Chart. You will see scatter and bubble options. Let me click on the first icon under the scatter plot option. You can see the scatter plot with a chart title. However, there are no X and Y axis labels. 
I'm going to click on the title text box and change the title to Relationship of Sales of Two Companies. Let's get rid of the grid lines. For that, you should click on Chart, click on the plus icon, click and uncheck the grid lines checkbox. Now, I'm going to add data labels. Click on the chart and then click on the plus icon. Select data labels. You can see the data labels. Let me customize the data labels. For this, double check on any data label and you will see the format data labels task pane on the right. Check values from cells. Select D2 to D5 as the data label range. Uncheck all other checkboxes. You can add trend lines. Trend lines help in showing the relationship. For this, you should click on chart and then on the plus icon. Here, you check the trend line checkbox. You can see that the relationship is almost perfect here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an area chart. Area charts are also useful to visualize differences between several data sets over time. Let me consider the data on yearly sales of two competing firms. The data is in the cell range A3 to C9. I'm going to select B3 to C9. This way, I can have the legend, but I will also have to add x-axis labels later. Now, let me go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and then click on the Line of Chart icon. You can see 2D and 3D variants of area chart towards the bottom. I'm going to select the first icon under 2D. You can see an area chart is created with the title, legend, and y-axis label. I'm going to change the chart title to Sales Comparison Over Time. Now, let me add years as x-axis labels. Here, the x-axis labels are displayed as 1, 2, 3. You can change that to display the actual years 2013, 2014, etc. Click on the chart and select Filter icon just below the plus icon. Go towards the bottom and click on Select Data icon. You can see a dialog box with two sections. The left section is to edit y-axis series, whereas the right section is to edit x-axis labels. Go to the right section and click on Edit button and add x-axis range. I'm going to select the cell range as A4 to A9 and click OK. You can observe that the years are updated in the horizontal axis. Area charts with multiple series overlap one over the other. So, one can make the areas transparent to get a feel of one layer behind the other. In this case, the sales of Company A are not visible for all the years. If I change the transparency of the field color in Company B, Company A's line becomes visible. For this, I'm going to double click on the Company B area, and you can see the Format Data Series task pane on the right. Select the Fill and Line icon on the right, and then select Fill Color and change the color. Play around the transparency level to make sales of the Company A visible behind the Company B layer.